It was so close until it wasn't. Another week, another salt mine league run. You love to see it. The fact that I'm still doing runs, not the uh, not the losing part, that's that's not as good to see. Once again, we were one one, losing to someone who was easily going to make top eight. My cursed as fuck seeding had once again reared his ugly head and sent me to the losers bracket. But goddamn, did I put up a good fight! But hold on, you only showed one match. What do you mean one one? What do you mean once again? Last time you didn't win a match before you lost. And where's your aura? Hey, Jesus! Enough questions. Let's get you up to speed. When I last left you all, we had just completed two out of the four challenges. I'd gotten my hands on a blue aura and had come first in my local. Riding high off of that success, I immediately decided to pump the brakes so I could focus on making the first episode. Truly a genius idea. Because of this, for the month of May, there weren't many major developments when it came to tournament runs. In fact, my output of playing Guilty Gear was mostly halted. Funnily enough, completing two challenges that you thought were basically going to be impossible back to back burns you out of the game pretty quickly. So. I halved my tournament runs for the month. Unfortunately, I didn't make top 16 in any of these tournaments. Shocker. But I did begin to notice that runs similar to the one I had against Volcanage were becoming more and more common. I was beginning to make higher level players bleed, and people who I believed to be better than me, while still giving me trouble, weren't a death sentence every time I faced them anymore. My mental had also improved a shit ton since the end of the last episode. Riding high off of my first win, I felt much more confident about the game, taking losses on the chin, but still celebrating whenever I won. Like, just listen to the stuff that I'm saying while fighting Tim in this match. Oh, no, 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 fuck. Yeah, that makes sense. I should have ri- Ah! Oh, that made so much sense because I thought we were fucked. Believe in yourself and you will be amazed with what you can do, chat. Believe in yourself! I feel I could do basically anything if I kept putting my mind into all of it. And there was a very special event right around the corner which I needed to prep for. Yes, I'm of course talking about the Season 2 patch notes. In a few days, the game would be perfectly balanced. Chaos and Ram would get nerfed into the ground, Angie would become playable, they'd do something about Faust, and Giovanna, the most perfectly balanced character to ever exist, wouldn't change a bit. Look, at my level on this character, I've gotten so used to everything that she can do, I'm so close to breaking that barrier, I can feel it. Like, there generally isn't much I'd change about her buff or nerf-wise. Like, most of her stuff can be countered, but Geo has to work in order to make sure you don't do anything about it. Am I biased? Anyway, with June starting and the patch right around the corner, I thought I'd get back on the grind to see how well I was performing. After using my superior matchup knowledge to beat this Kai, I played a set against Tim in round two that you just saw. The ending to the set was three to two, which honestly, considering he's one of the best geos in the world, we take those. I instantly went into the next set against the Nagor Yuki without so much as a second to rest. Pro tip for anyone who's looking to compete in any competition ever, especially fighting games, if you could afford to take a bit of time between your matches, uh, take it. Especially if your previous set was intense and nerve-wracking, because when you're shaken up, you play worse and make worse decisions. Take the command grab. Let's just take the command grab. Let's instead of shitting ourselves the fact that we're gonna get hit with a command grab and losing 50% of our life, let's get hit with a command grab and focus on dealing with their Fukios. Let's do that instead. I had not only tied the game up by making the score 1-1, but I had managed to calm my nerves mid-match. As you can see, I was in the zone during this run.
just like that, we were back on the warpath. The score was now 2 to 1, meaning I had to win two more matches if I wanted to make it into top 16. However, my curse seeding once again decided to rear its ugly fucking head right when I needed it the least, as my next opponent was a Gold Lewis player known as Silver NT. Now, sometimes when people are being seeded, the goal is to put the better players near the top of the list so they don't run into each other early in the bracket. If they do run into each other, it can cause unnecessary upsets, easier brackets for some people, and just absolute doom for people in the loser's bracket when they have to fight a top tier player player earlier than they expected to. However, sometimes people fall through these cracks and end up getting a lower seed than they really should be getting. Silver seems to have been someone who fell through the cracks by looking at his tournament results. Because of this, he ends up making an absolute tear through the loser's bracket, and now he's just another player in his way. Yeah, so I, I I lost pretty bad. Honestly, I didn't know the Go Lewis matchup that well at the time, but still, fuck that noise. Besides, I don't want to have to fight a top tier player right afterwards anyway. Whatever, it's fine. We went 2-2 again, and we even did really well against some players who are just absolutely cracked at this game. Even against the Go Lewis, I managed to pull a game out of my ass. It'll all be fine. Once the patch hits, I'll be able to play with a more balanced and fair version of the cast. Everything will be fine. I just have to wait for the balance patch. I just have to wait for the balance patch. I just have to wait for the balance patch. 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 Axis, what the fuck have you done? This... This isn't right. What the hell am I looking at? No, 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 This... This can't be right. What... What the fuck's going on? This isn't how everything was supposed to go. They... They were supposed to fix everything. They were supposed to fix everything. No, 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 no. Come on. It's got to have some good stuff in there, right? Maybe they nerfed Naga. Well, maybe they nerfed Ram. Maybe they buffed... Angie? No, 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 this, this can't be. Why the fuck did they buff Kai? Why the fuck did they change the way that overheads worked? They nerfed Edo? What the hell is going on? What do you mean they hit the flip kick? Wait. No. Oh, God, God, no, 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 please. Oh, God, no, please. Not like this. Geo. What the hell did they do to you? They took it from me. They took everything from me. Everything I loved. Everything I learned. It's all gone. How could you do this? Arxis. Why? Safe to say, the patch wasn't everything everyone was making it out to be. The characters at the top of the list even got buffs or were changed so little that it barely mattered. Some characters got a lot of love, some had entire strategies taken away from them. And Geo, well, let's just say that she changed. In patch 1.18, alongside the battle update, Giovanna got a variety of buffs, nerfs, and changes to her kit. Let's start with the good stuff. When Giovanna has meter, all of her attacks now do chip damage, rewarding you for having over 50% meter. Her 236k was buffed, heavily buffed, now going about three quarters of the screen when used. The hitboxes on her DP were adjusted to be more consistent. Several of her jumping aerials had their properties changed, allowing for different air combo routes. However, it's not been fully explored how effective this has all been. Her dash was changed. Now, instead of having a set distance for her dash, Geo is able to adjust the distance by holding backwards or forward while in the dash. This decreases the amount of dashes needed to get full screen and allows for fake dashes by pressing back instantly. We'll go back to this dash in a bit. As for the nerfs... Oh, God. Her sweep took a hit. Now we're having reduced range and longer recovery in order to stop it being spammed. This was a really big complaint in Season 1. I'm not that sad to see it go. Her throw range was reduced, meaning you have to be within breathing distance of your opponent to throw them now. Not too big of an ass for Geo, but still a nerf nonetheless. Her 214k... God, her 214k... They adjusted the hitboxes on it and reduced the damage. 
the way they change the hitboxes means that players are now able to beat the move with anything that has overhead and vulnerability. Meaning all of Giovanna's special moves can now be beaten with 6P, thus leaving her pressure to be nowhere near as scary as it was. And a 2 on 4S, my favorite move. The move that I lovingly named the flip kick got hit the hardest. They made it so that you can adjust the distance of the flip by holding backwards or forwards while flipping, similar to a new dash. However, they reduced the frame advantage. And by reduced it, I mean reduced it by a lot. What was once a plus on block move is now negative five, meaning that Giovanna can be punished if the move is blocked by basically every character in the game. This hit me. It hit me pretty bad. This was my go-to tool for cross-ups and advantage frames, and to just see it go like that, to be replaced with a shell of his former self, it just hit me. To this day, Giovanna mains will still argue amongst each other if she was nerfed or if she got buffed. Those saying that she got buffed say that they just removed the cheap shit that would get bad players easy wins. That you could do everything you used to be able to do with Giovanna, you just have to work harder for it. Those who say that she got nerfed say, if you have to work harder for something that you used to be able to get so easily, that's basically what a nerf is, right? Who's right? Who knows? I don't care. I thought I was prepared for the change. Prepared for whatever would happen to my character, but this? This isn't what I expected. Going into Season 2, I thought I could handle the changes. It was just gonna be a lot of work. I steadied myself, picked up the pieces of my broken game plan, looked at what tournaments were on, and decided to go somewhere we haven't been on this channel yet. I decided to enter a Womble Weekly. Me picking up Happy Chaos and winning seven free matchups despite not being good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematic well, imagine not though. being mathematically better. Yeah, yeah. imagine, imagine not being mathematically better. I took two rounds from Tiger Pop. I think I'm mathematically better than him, personally. I, I don't know about you guys, but... Well, those are some new voices that we've never heard before. Guys, I have something to tell you all. I've been signed by a very serious, 100% legit, super serious eSports team, consisting of about 100 plus players-ish. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, meet ZBI, also known as Zato Blockers International. ZBI is an eSports team that was created with the sole purpose of destroying the hose. After successfully completing their mission without it being even close, ZBI is now a place for the best dry players to get good matches against each other and keep their skills sharp while just being the biggest fucking morons you've ever met. Rumor has it that if you spend more than two hours in a voice chat of the ZBI server, you lose brain cells at a rate only rival by talking to an Overwatch team chat or playing Genshin Impact. So how did I, a mid as fuck Giovanna player who just happens to make some of the dumbest Strive content on YouTube, find a way into the server? Well. That's easily silly. You simply play in Celestial a bunch, lose to Togata, while he's drunk he'll send you an entire paragraph on what you could do to be better, and a link to the server, and then just keep showing up until you become royalty. It's just that simple, guys. Also, no, you can't join this one, go join Glue Eaters. Thanks to the intervention of ZBI, I was actually able to find out about Womble Weeklies. Now, this tournament doesn't actually meet the requirements of the Top 16 challenge because the player count is too small. However, since the tournament is smaller, it means the competition is much more fierce, as practically only high-level players have entered the tournament. Since my biggest problem right now is not being able to get past those high-level players, I thought jumping into the lion's den would give me more experience and hopefully give me enough of a kick up the ass to get better. Not to mention, this is the first tournament I'll be playing since the Season 2 changes. Since I don't really have a goal for this tournament, it's against high-level players, and I'm still figuring out my character's changes, I thought this would be the best tournament to start with as it would allow me to focus on the game. Our first match was against a familiar face, and I was once again fighting Carlos. Since the EU Strive scene is relatively small, you'll inevitably run into the same people every once in a while, and since Carlos is a high-level May player, running into him in a Womble Weekly wasn't much of a surprise. While the last time was a bit of a shit show, I was determined to make sure I did it better this time, and try not to let myself be put on tilt. The first round wasn't exactly stellar. Carlos picked me apart with their meticulous pressure, making sure to keep themselves safe and open me up in really good ways. Though May had been nerfed this patch, he was still an absolute force to be reckoned with. The second round is very much the same, with May whiff punishing me into an 80% combo. I eat a trade, get my spiral abated, and suddenly it's one out to Carlos. For those of you who have forgotten, Gildia's Drive tournaments have the games run on a first to three format, meaning you have to win three matches in order to advance onto the second round. This means that Carlos has to only win two more games in order to beat me, and I still had to win three. 
the second game went much better. As in, I was actually getting a bit of damage on the board. As you can see, I completely threw the first round, but the second was going to be better, right? Fuck was that goal burst, holy shit. I had lost my match against Carlos Frio, which honestly is fair. Dude's one of the best maids in the world. My character got changed and I was molding. It happens, I don't mind. This firmly planted me in the loser's bracket. If I lost one more set, I'd be out of the tournament for good. Now, because my tournament luck is cursed as fuck, I had to wait for my opponent to be ready. The match that I was waiting on was a high level seed, waiting on a match that was still happening. Meaning I would have to wait for that match to finish so that those two could play and I would fight the loser of those two. Safe to say, I had a lot of time on my hands. I really wish I could say that this is pretty uncommon, but having a lot of time on my hands and having to wait because I've been sent to the loser's bracket early is unfortunately just a byproduct of the system, and sometimes you just gotta get used to it. So with all the free time, I watched the stream matches and some matches of the other guys in ZBI, all of which I forgot to record, by the way, before deciding that actually, I should probably focus on getting myself warmed up for my next match, as there's a slim possibility that I'll be fighting two high-level maids back to back. Yeah, I'm just gonna hop into Celestial real quick. Now, because I had already completed the Celestial part of the challenge and accepted what Celestial should actually be used for, I was having a much better experience playing these matches when compared to the horror that was the two-month grind to get my aura. Celestial was a place for me to test out new strategies and get to grips with new things about the fear of losing due to there literally being no punishment for doing so. This means that I could experiment freely with different techniques and combos I was not used to trying and try them out. As you can see, I was attempting to use safe jump setups that I'd never incorporated into my game plan as well as a fancy PRC flip kick combo, which was all over Twitter at the time. By practicing them in these matches in a live environment with no stakes, I was able to slowly but surely incorporate them into my game plan, using the safe jumps as often as I could, but admitting the combo because it, uh, it's hard to get consistent when you're starting out. And yes, this is my excuse for poor performance in these games. Now, as we discussed earlier, my mental state had improved significantly since last time I played, and I never tilted ever. Fun fact, Are I've been ready? like playing this game for how long now? Uh, I've been on this game an hour, I haven't had a single one to, uh, win since I've started playing. Like, uh, let's not, go. E not even one <laughs> fucking match, bro. Like, we love to hear that. I fucking am. Are you, are you also getting L's dispensed in your general direction? Oh, it's, like, it's, bro, I've it's had nothing fucking but two it's, days of that shit. It's fucking rough, buddy. I'm, yep. Yeah, okay, this is gonna be a fun one. The first round wasn't going exactly as planned, though I got a very early burst out of my opponent and they were able to call me out several times and take a large chunk of my health away, putting me in the yellow very quickly. If I wanted to win this round, I would need to pull it all back from the brink. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. It's fine, it's fine, we can bring this back. Just need to make sure that we don't get hit by any big move. It's fine, we can bring this back still. Okay, maybe if we just... Safe to say that I was playing... suboptimally. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but the way that I was moving, the way that I was structuring my pressure, the way that I was playing the game, just, it didn't feel right. I felt sloppy as hell, and this guy was punishing me for it. I need to clean up my act. Fast. If I didn't, the run could end right there, and I don't want to fall back into the O2 cycle again. Not after how far I've come. Come on, I got this. I just need to pull through.
With my spirits reinvigorated, I'd pulled the match back from the brink of defeat. Fun fact, that was my first round win all day. The season had been hitting me really hard. I don't know what to tell you. Now that I knew I could beat this Giovanna, I simply needed to do it two more times to secure my victory. And with this new momentum, I went fucking ham. And just like that, we saved the run, baby, up 1-1. I tried my hardest to shake off that feeling that something was off about my play, that something was off about my character, but I couldn't help it. Those interactions, those images, it just doesn't feel right. Whatever. It is what it is. Who's my next opponent anyway? Oh great, a Nagoyuki player who's the top seed and has a ridiculously high level. I was just looking for one of those, honestly. I'm sure this is going to be an extremely close and interesting match with a lot of back and forth, where we can both learn life lessons from each other. After all, he's seeded to win the entire tournament, and I'm seeded not to do that. So I'm sure this is gonna go swimmingly. Look at that, I'm even winning round one. I'm schmoving on him. Look at that life lead. I'm sure this will only end well for me when I have so many resources. I lost the first round in spectacular fashion, throwing away what might be the biggest life lead of my competitive career. My opponent, taking that momentum into the next round, proceeds to do the biggest brain Nago neutral you've ever seen. Hey guys, welcome to my Nago Ryuki neutral guide. Let's start off with some basic moves you can use if you think your opponent is going to try and get in your face. If they're running at you, you're going to want to try stopping them with a 2S counter poke. If that misses, don't worry, because for longer ranges, you can use a 2S to keep your enemy at bay. If your opponent is still sitting far away for any of your buttons to connect, threaten them with another 2S. It's a good option to try and psych them out. After whipping that 2S, you're going to want to try and do it with another 2S to cover the space in front of you. Finally, if all else fails, make sure that you try to poke them out with another 2S. Thanks for watching. I still lost that round. It's fine, there's always next match. I just need to bring this back. While Nago's buttons are absolutely insane, Giovanna technically still has better neutral. She's able to dip in and out of the areas of the screen real quickly, making her one of the only characters who can safely approach Nago after a whiff all the blood fast left. Well, I failed. Invalid Value is an insane player who will continue to take the names and games off the top players for many months to come. But as for myself, I'd come to a realization. With my face planted in the cold iron floor of the stage, I had felt defeat. I needed to make a decision. Am I going to stick with Giovanna, or is it over? There comes a time in many fighting game players' lives where they experience problems in a game they feel they can't overcome. Maybe a specific person or character that you can't beat. Maybe there's techniques that just you keep messing up on. Maybe there's placements in tournaments or rank just halts. Or maybe they just mentally falter and feel like they're not playing well. When this happens, there's multiple things players can do. They can train their ass off to get a bit stronger and hopefully brute force their way through the barrier they're facing. They can reach out to other players to help get perspective on what they're doing, to help them train, or to just support them for everything. Or they can decide to take more drastic measures. As we learned last time, fighting games are much about the technical skill and execution as they are about the mental game. Staying calm and remaining confident in yourself in a match can allow you to win even when it looks like victory is impossible. And tilting can make you lose to any opponent, no matter how much better 
you are than them. So, when I tell you that the change they made to Geo mess with my mental, you can begin to see the problem. Yes, they didn't exactly change her much, but the things they did change affected the core of her game plan. Her stagger pressure was changed, her frame advantage was changed, her wing condition was changed slightly, and most of all, her movement was changed. When I tell you the new dash fell off, I mean it. Controlling Geo before felt natural in my mind, but now trying to get her to a specific point of the screen felt weird and off. This is partly due to the fact that I don't use a dash macro button, I just use a stick to control everything movement-wise. So if I wanted to do a very short dash, I had to press forward and instantly go back instead of just doing the dash button and back. To me, it felt off. I hated it. I hate how I couldn't use flip kick like I used to. I hate how you could 6P through my 214K. I hate how over-reliant on meter they were pushing for the character. And I hate how they just changed things in matchups that were fine in my eyes. They took the bits of the character that I love, the things that I loved about the game, and changed them to be different, to be wrong. This is obviously just a matter of opinion, but when you play 500 hours on a character to have them change in a way that you don't like, it messes with you. It feels like crap. After that run, I didn't play the game much. I played a few Celestial matches and park sessions on stream where I let my chat know how I was feeling. Eventually, I was forced to take a week away from the game. Me and my family went to America for a week and I had no way to touch Guilty Gear Strive. I barely tried to think about it while I was over there. Honestly, I needed that trip to just clear my head and get out of the game for a bit. And when I came back, it let me look at the game with a new perspective, a clear perspective. When I came back, I knew I had to make a decision. A decision that could change everything. This video is brought to you in part by my wonderful patrons. Learn how you can join this list in the link in the description. When I got back from my break, it was early July. In just over one month, the biggest event in the fighting game community was going to happen. All the way in Las Vegas, Nevada, a brawl was going to go down. A tournament to eclipse all of a tournaments. The world stage for fighting games. And the biggest Guilty Gear Strive tournament to date. In just under a month, EVO was going to happen. EVO is the biggest and one of the hardest tournaments in the fighting game community. Its difficulty is only rivaled by invitationals. The goal is simple, make it out of pools. There was just one question though. How the hell was I gonna do that with this version of Geo? She's not what she used to be, far from it. She's gone from a character who spat in the face of the tier list and forced the top tiers to beg for mercy to someone who I can barely control around the screen. A month may sound like a long time. When you try to think of it, sometimes it can be hard to picture a full month. But the reality is, if you're trying to become good, if you're trying to become the best, a month is barely any time at all. Would it be enough to salvage everything I knew from old Geo and turn it into something good? Is that even going to be good enough? Do I have time to learn someone else? What if I put time into a different character and... I fail because of it? The hell do I do now? You, you, you saw, saw the last performance we had in our last run. She's nothing like she used to be. We can do better. We're performing well against top players. Yeah, against their secondaries. Do you really think we can fight Tiger in this state? You saw what Carlos did to us. What Invalid did to us. Imagine what someone like Tempest would do to us. And another character's gonna fix that, Ali. We already put 500 plus hours into her to get this far. That experience can't have just gone to waste. There has to be something we can do. Face it! It's not going to happen. We've seen how we react while we're playing her now. One wrong move and we'll falter, just like we always do. I believe in us. We can bring her back to what she was before. I... We're the Geo guy for fuck's sake. So you're gonna force yourself to play her because you're pigeonholed yourself into one specific character? Face it. We can't win with her. Not anymore. I... I don't want to leave her though. I know. I don't too. But... Right now... We don't have a choice. Giovanna. Thank you. You were the character that got me into this game. From the moment I saw your announcement trailer, I knew that I'd love you. And for the longest time, I did. You brought me my first wins in this game. You brought me my first Celestial rank. 
my very own aura. We crawled out of the O2 pit together, and I couldn't have made it this far without you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am today. Thank you. And I'm truly sorry I'm not strong enough. So, that just leaves one question. Who the hell do I play now? Choosing the main is no small feat. I didn't have much time to figure out who I wanted to play. Learning a whole ass character in a month isn't an easy feat, so whoever I chose is who I probably was going to have to stick with for the rest of the month. Because of this, the character needed to be someone I could pick up easily, someone who's strong. Someone I can stick a good amount of time into to learn all their stuff, but still get far with just my fundamentals. Someone with an iron solid game plan that's easy to understand, and someone I can look cool on. Eventually, I found my answer. So as you all probably know, recently, about... It must have been three weeks? Four weeks? There was an update to Gilead Gears Drive. A very big update. Season 2 came out. And they changed a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of stuff. A lot of characters got buffed. Some got nerfed. But a lot of characters got buffed. But, I have to make an announcement. I'm throwing in the towel, chat. I can't do it anymore. They changed Geo so fucking much, I didn't even realize. They changed her, and she's not the same character. At all. So I got to thinking, I need a character. If I want to do well at EVO, I need a character that is good, that sticks to the opponent, and I need them. I need to be able to learn them, and I need to like them. Chat, you probably already know who it is. I've made a video about them. They got buffed. They're one of the best characters in the game. And they're hot as fuck. I'm fucking- of course it's Bikon! Of fucking course it's Bikon! I knew from the moment that I saw this character that I wanted to play her. I've been a Biken main since Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, bro. In the old Guilty Gears, which I definitely played, Biken was a defensive powerhouse who was able to turn players' offense against themselves, using moves that she can use while defending, or using a special kind of block that she can cancel into different moves. However, in Strive, this was simplified into a parry, which does a lot of damage. What did she get to compensate for this? <laughs> oh, buddy, you have no idea. With Strive's high damage, unique roaming cancelling systems, and the fucking rope, Bikon is now a offensive powerhouse who can mix you so hard you could rival the dedicated mix-up characters with the amount of ambiguous shit you get from your moves. Frame traps everywhere, plus unblock moves, sticky pressure, a 10 frame overhead that you can cancel into from kicks and close slash. Insane damage with and without meter, counter hit combos that do most of your life, and a mechanic that literally forces your enemy into your preferred range. Looking at Biken on paper, she sounds like everything I'd want on Geo and more. Biken is nowhere near the most complicated character in the game, but comparing her to Giovanna, the range of options that I feel like I have with pressure and mix-ups is insane. Biker's pressure sequences are very different though. Geo had very basic pressure with 214k being your safe frame trap, and 236k and 214s being your plus on block but counterable moves. You could technically put them anywhere in your pressure, but they're generally used to end the sequence or reset it at a starting point. Mix in some throws here and there to bait the enemy into teching or backdashing, and you've got a very basic game plan for pressure. For Viking though, things can be a little bit more complicated. Your most basic and safe pressure routes end in Tatami Guys, which leaves you at negative 3. However, it pushes your enemy away a decent amount, meaning depending on who they are, and if they hit the wrong button, they can get a hit from a fast slash counter which leads to a full combo. So, you might want to use H. Kabari as an ender. This is also negative 3, however it pulls your enemy into your preferred range and has a follow-up. Most opponents hate this move for multiple reasons. While the correct option is to mash on block, Biken can easily parry any move that you throw out after H. Kabari for more damage than it's generally worth. Because of this, if players think a parry is coming, they'll likely choose to block. 
When they choose to block, that's when Baikon could go into whatever she wants. The first goal was simple. Now that I'm playing Baikon, I have to get into Celestial with her. With the month ending and my aura grind finish, I had to once again earn my place among the gods of Celestial. If I wanted to make it back into heaven, I had to win. So, I booted up matchmaking and got to fucking work. Be it on stream or off stream, I was going to make it back into the training grounds of the gods. I was going to learn as much as I could once I got there. It took a lot of attempts, and a lot of them were failures. I haven't spent this long on floor 10 for so, so long at this point. The battles felt like they were crushing me. It felt like hell. But I've been through worse, and I wasn't going to let this failure discourage me from my goal. So I kept getting back up, and up, and up, until eventually the blessed run finally happened. Learning a new character is never an easy feat, especially when it's one that's more complicated than the character you previously played. While I don't regret learning Giovanna as my main character, I will say sticking to an easy character for so long did make the transition to a different character harder than you would expect. Because of this, my game plan seemed chaotic, to say the least. Lots of dropped inputs, weird pressure, and it's just the strangest neutral decisions you've ever seen. But I still kept at it, and I knew if I just kept going, I'd make it into Celestial fair and square. For those of you who may have forgotten, getting a Celestial from 4-10 is no easy feat. You have to win 5 games without losing more than once. If you lose 2 games before you win your 5, you're sent back to floor 10 and have to climb your way back up. I've lost count of the amount of times I've tried to get back into Celestial at this point, but I couldn't let that discourage me. I knew I couldn't give up. I've made it in countless times at this point. Plus once more. The first match was against a May player called fucking Michael Jackson, so I knew I was in for a treat. May took the upper hand in our first match pretty quickly. My poor neutral habits had landed me with my back against the corner. I tried to escape and eat a really nice anti-air, but I'm also out of the corner, so who really won this interaction? May then proceeds to completely whiff their jumping heavy slash and lets me get a free throw punish. It's party time. At least it would have been, but they called me out on my side switch and we're back in the corner. Fuck it, spaghetti time! I eat that burst and find myself with my back in the corner. Eventually, however, I do some good blocking, and it's time to go on the offense. My sloppy as fuck neutral and offense won me the first round. It felt like crap playing like this, but we take whatever dubs we can get. The second round goes my way as well. While everything was still sloppy, I'm able to bait their burst, definitely on purpose by the way, and do a deliberately risky reset to beat them on the knowledge check. I didn't drop that combo, shut up. The May sees this as a great insult and takes it personally. They proceed to wreck my shit for the first round, calling me out on literally everything I'm doing. May is a character that's especially hard to catch, and this player was using that to their advantage. I need to clean up my axe. I decided to show May my second favorite Italian dish and hit her with a bunch of spaghetti again. I have no idea what these neutral and pressure choices were, but honestly, I was pretty nervous and losing a round to this May put the fear of God into me. And if you're gonna let me get away with two heads and to throw, then I guess you kind of deserve it. Anyway, going on to the last round, I'd clearly shown the May my game plan. Thinking she had me, I then instantly threw the spaghetti out and went for some clean interactions. Granted, missing this hate Kabari and eating a reversal super didn't fill me with much confidence, but I knew I'd be able to pull it back if I believed in myself. And then, shit hit the fan. I gotta get out of this! I genuinely think this is the first clip on this show where I just objectively get lucky. Like, I should have been dead there, but by some fucking miracle, the main missed her 2HS. WE FUCKING TAKE THOSE! Woo! I now had three matches left to win in order to make it into Celestial. I took that momentum and fucking ran with it. The next round was pretty good, however, I completely forgot how to confirm into Super and nearly threw the whole thing. It's fine though, we got the spaghetti on our side. I go into the next round with confidence. I get May on the brink of death, one hit away from taking it all, and I drop the spaghetti out of my pockets and all onto the floor. It's fine though, there's one more round left. We can salvage this, right?
And just like that, I was now up three to nil. I just needed to win one set against someone and I was in Celestial with Baikon. I took a deep breath. That last set had messed me up. It was the most chaotic set I'd basically ever played, and I felt extremely lucky that I managed to pull it back from the brink of defeat. One more set. Just one more. We got this. I go back into the lobby and look for my next opponent. And what do I find but another Baikon who's got about the same in-game level as me waiting in training mode. I've never seen their name before, so I don't recognize them as a killer. This should be good enough. I queue up against them and pray that this time, I don't lose. Honestly, this bike had felt like I was fighting a mirror version of myself. I spent a lot of time in the air, their pressure was decent but could be better, and they dropped inputs most of the time. That being said, the first round was too close for comfort, having them leave me on barely any health by the end of it. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. The second round started off in a very similar way. They were absolutely destroying me, but I didn't falter and then brought out some of my favorite dish. One more win, that's all I need. Just one more win. I nearly fall to the end, almost overcome with my nerves, but I'd actually done it. I reconnected my microphone to OBS and suddenly turned into Sea Dog VA for a second. I. Uh, ah! With this mini challenge complete, there was only one thing left for me to do. Alright, now we grind. <laughs> I knew it, the end of the month was approaching, and Evo was just around the corner. I trained as much as I could and began to slowly feel confident in my play, but how good have I really gotten? Celestial is a bit like a vacuum. You can feel like you're doing well, but it could be that you're only progressing a little bit, or you've not run into a lot of strong opponents. No, to find out how much better you've gotten, you have to throw yourself into the deep end. So, right before Evo started, I played in two different events to test my skill. The first was a ZBI tournament. However, because this video is already extremely bloated and the footage for that is three hours long, I decided to spin it off into its own dedicated video. Subscribe so you can see that. But as the month ended and Evo was less than a week away, it was finally time for me to test how much I had progressed. And I was going to do it the only way I knew how. As Celestial had just reset, I lost a fancy border around my profile. Unfortunately, 15 days wasn't quite enough to get enough wins for an aura, and also, I'm working on other things. But still, I'd improved greatly since I'd last done the Celestial run, and I felt more confident in my play. How much had I improved? Well, that was time for us to find out. For this run, I was in a call with my good friend Nevis, who you may remember from the first episode. Unfortunately, we don't run into her into this tournament, but she was there doing her own run and giving me moral support between rounds. My first opponent was an Eno player. This isn't a matchup I actually knew very well, but that's never stopped me from beating Enos before. The first round went pretty well for me. I got some good hits off and even landed an instant overhead to full combo just to take the round. However, right after the Eno realized she could just mix my shit and proceed to take the next two rounds, she brought the game to 1-0 in her favor. Ah, fuck, here we go again. 
It's fine though. I recollected myself and went into the second round. Next round, I focus much more on gaining advantage over my opponent rather than trying to out neutral them. Using the rope to my advantage, I was able to get on top of her as much as possible and secure myself a big fat dub. Tying it up, I felt much more confident going into the other matches. In the next round, I realized something pretty interesting. As I explained before, H. Kabari is actually negative on block, so people tend to mass on it. However, the Eno 100% of the time respected my H. Kabari, meaning the conditioning part of the setup wasn't really needed. Sometimes matches and fighting games are less about the actual matchup and figuring out what your opponent does and doesn't know about your character. And this Eno just showed her hand. We both proceed to do our best bunny impressions, and I take the round with this newfound knowledge. I then take the next round of the newfound knowledge with an instant overhead that they refuse to block. I was now up 2 to 1. One more match and I should be saved from an 0-2 run once again. After eating a very early burst, I put the pressure on hard and don't give the Eno space to breathe. Just one more round and winner's round 2 was mine. I used the knowledge that I learned in the previous round to get her to low HP. I even hit them with a reversal super. One more touch and this match is over. Considering that it only been a month since I started playing Baikon, I see this as an absolute win. I was now 1-0 in Salty EU and moved on to round 2. My next opponent wasn't going to be as easy though. Yep, looks like it's just another week in Salty EU, ain't it? Snail Tiger is one of the best guys in the world, and by fucking god does he prove it here. At least now I have the physical proof that Kai is privileged as fuck. Despite the back sets I was facing, I wasn't going to give up so easily. Well, I mean, we nearly had it. 1-1, one, one, back in the loser's bracket again. To be fair, this is the first salty run I've done in a whole ass month, and I'm on Baikun, so we'll take it. Still fucking hate Kylo. As is tradition in Salty EU at this point, I had to wait for some matches to finish before I could fight my next opponent. I decided to use this time productively by checking one interaction that happened in the game and doing literally nothing else. Wait. Before I knew it though, my next match was ready, and I was against another Eno player. How fun. This Eno proved pretty early on that she was going to let herself be opened up by basic pressure sequence, and I actually had to use mix-ups if I wanted to break her guard. Thankfully for me, though, with all the block strings she's been doing and her risk gauge getting pretty high, that guaranteed an easy kill with an instant overhead. The second round was going well until I dropped the combo and rightly got reversal for it. The Eno then found a break in my string and hit me with an air super. Yikes. Third round went much better though, only being ruined by me trying to mash out of a move without the mash out property. The second match starts with my burst getting baited and my attacks getting punished and me eating a raw super. The second round wasn't much different, making the score 1-1. I feel like I've been here before. So the third game was close, but I managed to bring it back. I could have easily closed it out early if I just didn't miss this input, but I clean it up pretty quickly. Second round quickly swings in my favor, with me getting the Eno to half health quickly. And then, I hit it. How the fuck did I drop that? We clean it up pretty quickly though, it's alright. I take another easy round and quickly take the entire match. 2-1, baby! We tied with how well we normally do. I felt much more confident in my games now that I tied the placements I normally do with my old main. Now it's just time to see if I'd improved or if I'm as good as I was before. Now, Nago vs. Baikin isn't a matchup I know very well. The amount of Nagos in the EMEA region was once plentiful, but it's slowly been dwindling over the lifespan of the game. I'd barely run into any during my Celestial travels, so I was gonna have to go off everything I'd learned with fighting Nago in my Geo days. It was not gonna help me that much. The first round didn't go my way, but the second was much better, being a good demonstration on why you really gotta watch your resources. Another lucky pop for me nearly secures me the third round until... Oh no! Now then takes all of his momentum and Fukio's with it into the second round, making the set 2-0. In the third match, he keeps going at full speed, barely giving me a chance to breathe. Even an unceremonious pop isn't enough to save me. This doesn't mean it's over for me, though. I claw back to the second round and show him that he's gonna have to work if he wants to get this win. He pops again and bursts, puts me into the corner. After a bit of a scramble, I get counter hit and then...
Now the fourth match wasn't as pretty, unfortunately. I'm only able to capitalize off of his pop from the first round, and in the second, he's able to box me out really easily. A couple of sloppy interactions, and I lose the set. But I did get that one win. Considering that it taken over a month to learn bike into this level, and I tied with the placing I normally get with Giovanna, I was happy with my performance. I was content. I felt I'd made the right choice, even if there was absolutely more for me to learn. For the rest of the week, I took things easy. I still played some matches and grinded, but there was something much more important on my mind. Something I had to prepare for, because in a few short days, I'd be getting on a plane, heading to Las Vegas, and be playing in EVO. Evolution, the biggest fighting game tournament in the world. A combination of a bunch of different games all coming together under one banner to form the biggest celebration of the fighting game community. Doing well in EVO is a dream for almost every fighting game competitor. The dream of one day being on that top 8 stage among the greatest players in your game is something few can achieve but many, many players dream of. But my goal wasn't to get on that stage. Not yet. No, actually, I doubt I'd ever be able to get on that stage, honestly, that's, that's a bit too far. My goal was much, much simpler. In large major tournaments, you start in a place known as a pool. Pools are basically mini tournaments where the winners make it into the main tournament. If you remember correctly, one of my goals was to try and make it out of pools in a major tournament. There's two majors which we're going to be going over, with the first one of course being EVO. I made my way across the world to the really fucking hot desert of Las Vegas to compete in the tournament. If you want to see a casual video I made about it, I made a small vlog where I mostly just dick about with Proxy and Alex Nostalgic and have a good time. But this isn't about my cool ass friends, this is about my cool ass run. So how did I do? Well, I might as well walk you through everything that happened in my pool. Before my matches started in my pools, I found my opponent warming up at a setup. I didn't want to reveal any tactics, so I didn't sit down with them. I also couldn't tell if they were the Angie who was cooking, or the Zardo who was honestly getting pretty cooked. However, these two kept playing as the pool started. How many sets did they played? They played 15 full fucking matches before and while the pool started, and the only warm-up I had was against Proxy about an hour ago. This isn't looking good. Thankfully, the tournament organizer at the desk saw this and said I could warm up with someone before I played my match, which I'm very grateful for, because my opponent was definitely warmed up. I played against this Faust player who I unfortunately have forgotten the name of, but they were really cool and it was a pleasure meeting them. After a few rounds of sparring, it was time to start the tournament. My opponent was actually the Zardo player that I saw, so my worries were pretty quickly quenched. I sat down, ready myself, and began to get to work. Thankfully for me, my first round opponent didn't put much of a fight. I would really like to say this is because I'm an epic gamer, but it's actually because of a very basic knowledge check that he didn't know about. Every round, apart from the last, my opponent would start the match with a 2S, not realizing that Biken's fast slash beats that move. So every round start, I got a free counter hit combo to start me out. I will admit that my opponent started bringing it back in the final round. However, I managed to figure out they were respecting my Kabari and hit them with the confirmed throw kill. We have successfully survived round one of the tournament, and I was feeling pretty confident. I will admit my opponent slamming his stick after every round loss shocked me a little bit, but having Proxy there to cheer me on was more than enough to keep my mental stable. One more, Nate. Before I knew it, I was set back down at the setup, ready for round two. Of course, with my amazing luck, I have my next opponent as a Ramlethal player. For those of you who are unaware, currently Ramlethal is seen as basically the undisputed best character in the game. Her neutral options are insane, her wing position is easy to execute, extremely powerful, and can be executed from basically anywhere on the screen, and she has one of the most annoying supers to get hit with in the entire game. However, due to how fighting games work, whenever a character is top tier, it's inevitable that you'll run into them several times, and trust me, this was not the first Ramlethal I squashed, and they won't be the last. This Ramlethal definitely wasn't a pushover, however, as they were blocking my pressure and keeping me on the offense pretty well. But with two whole rounds up, I knew that this game was entirely mine to lose. I just need to mix up my offense a little bit, and I'll be fine. While they thought they had me pinned down in the corner, I managed to find a gap, super out, and knowledge check them to death. One more round, and I'll have taken it. 
Oh, perfect. Close it out. You'll love to see it. Also, I should probably say the footage you're looking at is a recreation of these matches. Proxy did record all of my footage, and I'm trying my best to recreate the stuff in the game. But also, this isn't the best quality, unfortunately. Bless their heart, though. They were a massive help. I'll be taking their channel point from. He's still alive. Oh, never mind. Oh, this is crap. What am I talking about? After this match, I realized something pretty neat. Evil works a free out system, meaning that for every pool, three players make it out. Two players out make it on the loser side of the bracket, and one makes it out on the winner's side. Whoever wins in the loser side of the pool makes it out, but for the winner's side, both players in winner's finals make it out of the pool. One in winner's, and one in loser's side. This means I had to only win one more match to secure my exit from the pool. I was beginning to get nervous. This run so far felt pretty easy. A a little bit too easy. I was used to getting my ass beat really, really early on in tournaments, so to have my first two matches go so smoothly left me feeling... off. Perhaps now was going to be the time I finally ran into the immovable wall I'd been bashing my head against all this time. I sat down at my setup and prepared myself for my fate. I had to fight another fucking Ramlethal player, are you kidding me? Despite my worries, I started the match out strong putting on the pressure early and squeezing in a quick round one victory. My opponent responded back in kind, showing me what they had to offer, as well as showing me exactly what high-level Gilly Gear should look like. Yo, why are footies? Let's go! <laughs> After that, I was made a little bit nervous. What else could this guy do? How many moves is he thinking ahead? We started the next round and then, what I can only describe as a PS4 moment happened. Oh, what? After this quick involuntary pause, we quickly resume the match. I managed to get my enemy on low HP, but unfortunately don't get the kill. Thankfully, they lovingly ran into my tatami man and I take round one. I then instantly plant on my face with the momentum I had, but I do have a chance to bring the round back. Until I fuck up the instant overhead and lose the round because of it. My opponent takes that momentum and sprints into round two, tying the games up one to one. Maybe I had found my wall. I tried not to let it phase me and kept going. I come into the next round swinging for the fences, getting a nice air super and an uncharged 5D to take the round. Sometimes if you know you can't do something, you have to look for alternatives, and hitting an uncharged overhead at this point was fine. I don't let my opponent breathe as I hit a disgusting side switch after the throw and even land a TK Yosan Sen into the flashy combo to take the round. One more win and I was out of pool. I just need to breathe, focus up, play the best bike and I could. Yes. Just like that, we managed to secure our spot out of pool. Honestly, this challenge ended up being easier than I thought it was going to be. Thankfully, I did have a pretty decent seed, which practically set me up to fight randoms all the way to winners' finals. But still, after grinding Salt EU and Salt Mine tournaments so much, this ended up being a lot simpler than I expected. But of course, the run doesn't end there, because now I have to face the person waiting for me in winners' finals. And you don't think just because I was in another country my bracket look was going to get better, did you? Oh, no, 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 my friends. This was going to be the hardest challenge I'd face in the series so far. For those of you who don't know, Tempest NYC is one of the best Leo players in the world. Tempest has made a name for himself by placing extremely high in several major tournaments, which includes a first at Combo Breaker, the last American Major right before EVO. Beating Tempest wasn't going to be easy. Hell, I'd say it was a damn near impossible task. But I had to at least give it a shot. If that last opponent wasn't my wall, then Tempest was definitely going to be. But let's see if I can do at least something to make these bricks bleed. The first round was going well, until it wasn't. I nearly won the second match, 
until I didn't. You no, know, sometimes there's moments in life where you have your ego checked. There's something you thought you were good at, and then someone else takes it and shows you without a shadow of a doubt that there's still so, so much more to learn. Tempest did this to me. He showed me the absolute mountain I had to climb if I wanted to be even close to his level. After that, in the third game, I... I parried him. Not once, not twice, but three whole ass times. And I took a round. Gods can bleed. This wall isn't indestructible. I just need to know how to take it down properly. I could win these. I can make gods bleed. Oh, I we go. Can, can even take a game. Let's go, me! Let's go! Going into this, I honestly didn't expect to even take a round off Tempest. Never mind taking a full ass game. It was spaghetti as fuck, but a game's a game. That's still a point on the board. I don't make it much further in the set, unfortunately. Having Tempest hit me with an absolutely criminal shimmy and taking my whole ass HP bar for it, but I don't really care. I accomplished what I came here for and got a win off an insanely good player alongside it. From going 0-2 at my online regionals to winning my locals to now making it out of pools at EVO, I felt a sense of accomplishment. I took the rest of the tournament pretty easy. I played my next match of the day after and got washed by a soul that whiff punished all of my moves, but I didn't mind. I had done it. I spent the rest of EVO having a good time with my friends and just enjoying the experience. After all, I finished what I came here to do. At least, that's what I thought at the time. See, soon after I bombed out of my bracket, I checked my tournament schedule, just so I could know when top 8s were happening for different games, and something caught my eye that sent shivers down my spine. The part of the bracket that I had made it out of was listed as pools round 1. The part of the tournament I had bombed out in was actually the second round of pools. Meaning, while it had seemed like I had made it out, I'd actually only made it halfway through the pools before drowning. By taking it easy and not preparing, I had foolishly thrown away the victory of my challenge by not reading the tournament schedule correctly. I hadn't actually done it. In fact, I barely got close. This realization shook me. It scared me. If I was only halfway through making it out of pools, how much more did I need to train to fully make it out? How much stronger did I need to get? What the hell happens now? The sense of defeat was strong. So strong, in fact, that when I got back home, I tried to think of literally anything other than my tournament run. I got to see my friends for the first time in a long time, and I spent most of my time talking to them and trying not to think about Guilty Gear. But... It was only so long I could last before I had to face the reality of the situation. If I didn't make it out of pools at EVO, I had to make it out of pools at versus fighting. And who knows if that's even possible. Worst of all, the versus fighting bracket was shaping out to not be so favorable. In fact, it was shaping up to be a terrible run. Oh! Oh! You know, it, it's just the best happy chaos player in the world top one rank player on raiding update for several months you know it's just tiger pop i give up for those of you who don't follow the emea scene tiger pop is one of the strongest players in europe and one of the strongest happy chaos players in the world Dominator of online tournaments, ender of runs, and Mark's enthusiast, Tiger Pop is a master of rushdown happy chaos. Preparing to play against Tiger is nearly impossible. You can play against as many happy chaoses as you want, but none of them will prepare you for Tiger Pop. So, I had my work cut out for me going into versus fighting. This could be my final shot at this goal for the rest of the year. I had to make it count. Welcome to the center of Birmingham. Fun fact, the first thing somebody said when I got here was, So, how much do you know about knife crime? I didn't actually record the games I played because I didn't have the luxury of going with a friend. I did meet some of the ZBI guys though and hung out with them a lot. But they were all generally playing around the same time I was, and I didn't want to be a weirdo asking them to record my games, and none of them offered, so... You're just gonna have to deal with the recreation of everything I have from my memory. The first match I had was against a Ramlethal player, who I unfortunately haven't heard of before. If we take a look at the bracket, you can see that I once again got very, very unlucky, as nearly half of the players on the other side of the bracket didn't show up. 
So instead of getting lucky like these guys and getting any free wins, I had to play out all of my matches. Yippee. I sat down on the setup, logged in my character, and began playing. And my play felt... off. I'd warmed up on that day and the day before, however... I hadn't actually been winning most of the people I've been playing against. Granted, a lot of the players I ended up fighting were in ZBI and were therefore absolutely cracked, but even against people who I'd normally beat, I'd been losing a lot of my matches. Add that on top of that fact, I was traveling alone, and I didn't have someone standing behind me at all times, making sure I was mentally all right, giving me tips and cheering me on. A lot of the time, I was the only one in my own corner. Combine this with the pressure I was feeling from needing to complete this challenge, and this caused an unexpected side effect. I was the most nervous I've ever been while playing a set. Somehow, I managed to take the set from Ramlefold despite my ridiculous nerves. I need to calm down, it's gonna be alright. I managed to take the set 3-0, I just gotta take that momentum and go with it into the next round, as unfazed as possible. Who's my next opponent anyway? Ah, uh, shit. Tiger unceremoniously beat me 3-0, sending me straight to the loser's bracket. I didn't even land a hit on him for the first two matches. I would say it's embarrassing, but I was honestly expecting to not land a hit at all, so we'll take it for one match. But the most important thing I realized while playing, the thing that hit me the hardest, a realization stronger than seeing the gulf of skill between us, is that Tiger's just a dude. Hell, everyone who's playing in this tournament is just a person. I know, crazy concept, right? Top players are people too. We live in a society. But it was something that I didn't really let cross my mind until now somehow. There's nothing that makes Tiger different from me other than he's just better at the game. There's no difference between me and any top player. They're all just people. They're not robots who perform the mathematically correct option every time. They're not emotionless beings of pure skill. He's just a dude. He's probably a massive nerd. Most people there probably were. There was no reason for me to see them as anything else apart from just a person who's good at a video game. And that goes for everyone who's sick of video games. Hell, that goes for everyone in the world. There's nothing that really makes me different from other people. I just make dumb videos, have a northern British accent most of the time, and play a nerdy video game. I got this fucking world-changing revelation from getting my ass kicked to the fighting game. And after that, my anxiety just kind of faded. It just sort of disappeared. I knew that in my next set, my opponent was going to make mistakes. And I was going to capitalize on that. My next opponent was a Potemkin player. Normally, I hated fighting big body characters, but I knew what Pot could do and couldn't get away with. I took this knowledge I had of the matchup and ran fucking train on my opponent. With that, I was in losers' finals of my pools, and I had one more match to play before I had to complete the goal. And that's when the TO informed me that my next match would be on stream, and I got hyped! This was perfect! The last match to complete my goal was going to be on stream? I need to let my audience know. I gotta just wait for my opponent to finish his match, and I can show everyone what I've been working to- Oh, wait. Never mind. My opponent took too long in their set, and they have to find somebody else to play on stream. My opponent finally finishes their long, grueling match, ending it 3-2. I was stood right behind the setup, taking as many notes as I could. The winner was a Leo player, a character who, at the start of the game, I used to despise. I had a lot of matchup knowledge against Leo, however, so I was more than prepared for this match. This was it. Win here and complete the challenge, or lose and wait a whole year for my next shot. I sat down, took a deep breath, and prepared myself.
I had done it. I'd made it out of pools of the major. For real this time. I made it out of a respectable 25th place, taking down one more opponent on my way for the bracket, who happened to actually be a TO at Sunday Faceoff. Sorry, Benners. It's fine, he got his revenge a month or so later. With that, another challenge was complete. I had gone much further than I was expecting, and got an amazing run at a major. I spent the rest of the tournament hanging out with the ZBI guys, getting food, watching finals together, and overall having a good time. Both versus fighting and EVO were events that I'll never forget. The experience of being in the room when hype things happen is unlike anything I've ever felt before. I cannot express how happy going to these majors made me. I want to thank the TOs of both events for putting them on. You guys did an amazing job. I also want to thank everyone who came up and said hi to me. I know I made a fool of myself in front of some of you, but it was great meeting you all. And... I want to thank my friends for cheering me on, consoling me when I lost, and making the experience of competing as good as it could have been. With that, there was only one challenge left for me to finish. I had not expected this to be the challenge that gave me the most trouble. However, it would make sense that this challenge we started with would be the last one we have to finish. I set my sights on one thing that I had left. The only goal that had eluded me for so long. It was time to get my top 16 placement. 